Hey everybody, welcome back to another Eve Echoes University video where today we're going to talk about tanking. Whether you're using the MOA, a stabber, or any other type of ship, tanking is a pretty basic concept, but we're going to compare the different types, different modules you can run, fittings, and go prices because honestly they get a little bit pricey for those of you who aren't earning like 400 million isk a day and these can work whether you're doing ratting in low sec null sec or wherever and we'll talk about the pros and cons of each so let's uh get into the video yeah fancy intro music yeah Woo All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at Tech 5 and Tech 6 ships. We're going to start with the MOA, which is a Tech 6 Kaldari cruiser. Now, this ship is pretty much set up to be a tank out of the box in terms of the bonuses to it. You see you got a bonus of shield resistance per level there. So obviously your skills are going to be very, very important, but then also getting a bonus to railgun damage and the fall off, which is important because, well, this thing is slow and we'll talk about comparing it to the stabber in just a second. And you see the basics of the defense. We're not gonna worry about that as much because we're gonna go down to the description just to show you what actual applies to this or what researches and skills apply. You see cruiser command, obviously the defense upgrade. And the important thing is this applies to both ships we're going to be comparing today and any cruiser tank that you're looking to build. But because we're focusing on shield tanking, I'm focusing on my stabber and focusing on the MOA. And then you've got the engineer cruising, target management, etc., etc. Now, this is what my MOA does out of the box with these fittings. Let's talk about the fittings that I'm using. Instead of going snub nose, because this ship is so slow, we're talking about it running like 240 meters a second, just really, really slow. I'm, I can bicycle in space faster than this. I'm using the flintlock medium rifled railguns. You will have a little bit less of a DPS there than you if you were to use snub nose, but you have a greater range. You see an 18K range with a 12.96 fall off for me based on the skills and stuff that I have. And these are the weaker faction versions. You have much stronger versions of these rail guns that you can go ahead and add to your ship. You see my total DPS is 208 with my drone. Now I'm running a small drone here instead of a medium drone. And a lot of you are gonna ask, well, why are you running a small drone? The reason being is the one fallback or one failing of this MOA is going to be frigates. Frigates are going to come in, get in close to you, and you're going to really struggle to hit them. The small drone is going to do better versus those small ships than to have a medium-sized drone. And that's also why I have the web of fire. Now, on the flip side, one thing that you always want to make sure happens is that your capacitor always stays up as much as you can. I never have a problem with my capacitor with my current build, and we'll talk about it in a second, but that's also why I have a Nosferatu. For when those frigates come close, I attach the NOS onto them to make sure I'm getting that power drain, which hopefully also limits their ability to webify me so stinking much and make me start flying at like 40 meters a second. Ooh. Now let's look at the bottom. See, I've got a medium rig here for my uh, capacitor battery which actually is going to give me a huge boost and I really, really don't struggle with cab, but I'm also running two invulnerability fields. These are basic Mark Fives, nothing fancy, no faction here. It would be very be much better if they were. But remember when you run two of these things, you're gonna get a cutoff on the second one. So the cutoff on the second one is only gonna give me a 50% of what it's showing. So you see the shield damage resistance is 27.29. So my other one's only gonna give me half of that, which is right around, you know, like 13.6 or something like that. Yeah, you know, just math, who needs math? But still very useful. And then of course we've got a shield, a medium shield booster simply for the repair. Once again, I'm not running a faction there. And then you can use this or you not. Uh, there is a mixed feeling on to use this because you have a passive bonus to this right here. You get a passive shield armor and structure bonus of 6.82% with a just a basic Mark V. Now, I'm sacrificing running a shield hardener to use this instead. Even though I'm a shield tank, I still don't want to be completely squishy when it comes to my hull and my structure. And if you can see in my defensive tab here, you can see my shield hit points at 5580, my armor at 3720, and then 3337 for my structure, with my shield being the weakest, especially when it comes to the EM resistance. So those are Mars or what I really have to watch out for. However, it's still at 17,000, right? 17,000 defense without any anything active. So I'm going to undock real quick and show you what it looks like defensively when I activate my module. So what you're going to do is immediately activate. Now I've got them uh, in terms of keyed up, but I've got all my shield hardeners, my vulnerability fields, and my battery keyed up 
on one key. So I hit my space bar, my emulator, and bam, now they're active. So now let's take a look at what my defense is with those active. So this is just with two invulnerability fields in my battery. My defense is now at 22.6, including a huge EM resistance jump, which is probably the biggest key there for my shield. And then I've still got a little bit of other stuff resistance there. Now, the big one for me, and you can change this out for an invulnerability field. The fact that I'm over 22,000 defense is very, very tanky already. But when I activate this bad boy, wrong way, the damage control unit right here, it's only going to last for 13 seconds. However, for those 13 seconds, if you are getting pounded by T7 tier 8 anomaly, your defense is going to skyrocket to 46,000 and basically make you untouchable. This is the get out of the fight card. This is allowing you to, your shields are about to fail, you warp, because remember, as soon as that happens, you got a 150 second timer that knocks down. So you can use a few different, you know, there's a couple different ways to go about the get out of jail card. My get out of jail card is that booster right there. Now, typically I'm not actually going to run out of shields against the T7 anomaly. I'm gonna be able to tank that solo. But if you are going, especially against elites, if you're going on storyline missions, having that extra like, you can't touch me, let you warp out, get rid of the aggro, and then come back in and reset the aggro, depending on how you're wanting to fly that boat. Also, shield hardener works very well there. Now, real quick, we're gonna hit a rig, look at rigs, and then we're gonna flip over to looking at the stabber. Rigs, I'm using capacitor rigs. Another rig, to rig there's really only one other option to run here and that would be the warp nullification or the warp optimization i'm sorry which gives you a plus one to your warp optimization which basically means those people come around with warp jammers and pvp or even the elites in some of these storyline missions or these anomalies that can lock you down that warp optimization will prevent you from being locked down and let you fly out of there I'm using CAP because we're mostly running PVE with groups right now, so I don't worry about that as much. I have friends to help me out, but just in case, and then I'm also running one shield boost and one DPS boost with a 25% shield boost there because this is a shield tank and then a railgun boost. Now, let's take a look at the stabber. All right, so here is my stabber that I've also been using as a shield tank, and this one using a little bit more range, if you can see by the guns that I'm currently outfitting, which are the Jolt Medium Strike Cannons uh, with a 20 and a 23 fall off and optimal you know respectively but this is what i've been doing for like t6 and t7 anomalies before i moved up to the moa simply for tanking as a shield tank now you can see by the total defense it is a lot lower and the first thing you'll notice is that it has zero em resistance out of the box so that's one of the things that a lot of these modules are is going to help with and actually why the fact that i'm not running the passive boost in the background i'm running the full-on and vulnerability field and then a hardener and then a shield booster, which is the Lone Ranger one, which is actually a nice little extra oomph there. But let's undock it real quick, and I'll activate those and show you what it looks like with a full-on set turned on. And then we'll take the MOA out, and you can see the MOA tanking, and you get the kind of idea of what shield tanking is. Now remember, my Alliance and my Corpse run a, a lot of group stuff. So this is a focus on if you're playing with your people, a little bit more than solo because the warp optimization is still not what I'm using here even in my stabber no warp optimization and there we get a close-up you like the close-up a little bit more so I'm going to move these around and we're gonna turn all these on at one time so now that we've got all of our abilities on for shields you see the beautiful animations there let's go to our fitting you see it jumps up to 13.7 still not a tremendous boost but a boost nonetheless and that is going to then give me a little bit more of my survivability there and that's using all three of those now once again the passive is going to matter and what i want to do is throw on the passive to show you what it looks like i've been using the all three to keep them going because right now my cap can handle it when i'm running that medium battery plus having a nos i can handle the cap drain because remember these stabbers do not have a tremendous amount of or any mimitar ships have a tremendous amount of capacitor because they're made out of rust and duct tape but Real quick, be right back. All right, so now that I've put the Mark V damage booster on, I'll show you the fitting and how the defense is. Now, remember, the defense is going to show actually higher right now. But remember, you do have a little bit more EM resistance, but the overall shield, because we're trying to focus on shield tanking here, you get that passive bonus of about, what, 6.5% or 6.8% for this Mark V to everything, which is very useful, but it's still half what that reactive was giving us. So now let's turn everything on. 
And now let's take a look at our fittings. And this is with everything on, including the damage control. The damage control jumped us up to 28351. Now we'll show you what it is when it deactivates, but you see it's an immediate jump to like an instant short survivability. But the cooldown on it is just god awful. I mean, I know a lot of people don't use it because of the cooldown, but it can be handy in that moment. Now, now let's take a look at it without. You see we're at 13825 with 4049 shield and then there are your resistances running with two of those rigs and not a reactive. So just the invulnerability and then the shield repair. So that's the invulnerability giving you that boost right there. So it's a good loadout for both to do shield tanking. The only difference that you can rerun is if you wanted to add one more rig for pure shield and take a little bit out of DPS, but it's really tough to take out of DPS because, well, you don't want to be doing no damage at all. But if you're a, you know, tech five and you're looking at a stabber as a shield tank or you're a tech six and looking at mo you can also look at the stabber fleet issue at tech six for the same type of fittings and loadouts that we're running right here just to give you that same feeling this is just a tank we'll go over pure dps builds in another one especially uh, other types of way to tank like speed tanking which is also really fun in memotar ships because they have a natural speed boost that's one thing about this ship here which it's not right there it's i need to scroll it up i can't here's navigation so one thing about this one here is the stabber is far, far faster in terms of every maneuver and flight than the MOA is. The Mimitar ships are nice and quick and make good speed tanks, but hey, that's another video. So if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe down below, and real quick, I'm gonna go jump into an anomaly while we do that. So uh, live long and prosper. Stay safe with those Space Cowboys. Remember, shoot first. An even better outro than the intro. Yeah!